this is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Well, hello there, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. India Bill, thumbs up in it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, for those that weren't aware, because I wasn't even aware until uh, I was watching the California Extreme 2020 stream, uh, which is pretty much going to be the gist of our entire show here. Um, yeah. But it turns out it's National Pinball Day. So happy Pinball Day, Woo-hoo. everybody. Very good. Yeah. That means we have to play pinball, right? I'd... Or talk about pinball or do something. So we're meeting the, we're meeting the requirements of the day already just there, by being here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I have been playing pinball. I was playing uh, Zen's uh, tournament that they were doing, with which was oh, one yeah. ball on uh, uh, Tales of Arabian Nights, uh, no upgrades. Okay. And, yeah. Which is... One ball is kind of hard on that. <laughs> One ball is brutal, and there's a score of two billion up there for that. Something like that, yeah. I, so my whole goal was my whole goal was just to try and get into the top ten, and I've only gotten to twenty second place. Twenty second. What score did you have to get to get to twenty second? I'm, I'm at like forty two million, something like that. Jeez, it's six billion now. Is it Roboloco? Far out. Yeah, it's, it's it's freaking ridiculous. I don't. I mean, because I know what it is. That? I know what it is. It's just all you because all I was doing was spamming Lightning. the harem multi ball. That's all you. It's harem multi ball, is it? All right. Yeah. So it's just shoot up into the bumpers, keep on raising the harem multi ball uh, jackpot until you get harem multi ball, and then keep that going as long as you possibly can. Wash and repeat. I don't even bother trying to collect jewels. <laughs> right. Um, it's just harem multi ball all day, every day. And and basically all I'm doing is uh, sticking to my outer loop shots. Because those are the safe ones. As soon as you start shooting in the middle and you start hitting the spinner, then your ball goes all over the place and you're going to drain. So. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that lamp is lucrative for the yes. bonus points, but yes. geez, it's it's a death trap. And I managed with one to. Ball, that's no no fun with one ball. <laughs> right, right. I, yeah. I managed to do in. Uh, I think I talked about it last week. Uh, Coaster Wizard doing his tournament that follows David Six's tournament on Reddit. Uh, but he had, we had done um, Tales of Arabian Nights, and I chose as my uh, wizard power, Rewind. And I was able to get massive score because of being able to rewind any time it drained. I think I had my... I th- God, I want to say that I had the harem jackpot up to a million per hit. Wow. I think. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, th- that's how you're getting the 6 billion score. It's obviously somebody yeah, knows how right. to keep the ball alive. My problem was was I was playing with uh, with the old uh, cabinet there, and mm-hmm. for some reason the accelerometer wasn't registering nudging, <laughs> and I didn't feel like a... pausing to do. So I was doing getting my score without nudge, which that's I don't nudge good. much anyway. So I, It's funny. I don't really tend to nudge that much either. I sort of just... It's weird. I would do it all the time on a real pinball machine, but for some reason when I'm playing Zen, I tend not to nudge unless I can really see the balls in peril. Otherwise, I just let let, let the physics play out. Right, yeah. right. Or, or the other thing is that uh, if I know that it's a situation where... Um, not that there's railroads in Zen, but there are definitely precarious situations where you're like yeah, I better nudge otherwise it's a 50-50 shot of if it's going to go in the outlane or not um, yeah but I found a, a really bad one the other day on Attack from Mars in um, classic arcade physics okay if you shoot if you're shooting up into the um, saucer it, it's literally every single time it'll come back down and drain on you um, and it's I, I haven't worked out how to recover from it there was a point at which I was trying to do, I think it was a challenge or something like that. And I just had to avoid the saucer because it was just unrecoverable drains. So I don't know whether it's just me or whether it's something I'm doing. No, it's not you. I, I don't shoot the saucer unless I'm in multiple because otherwise it's, it's too risky. really odd. Yeah, it's it's really bad. It's not really realistic either because the, the thing that I'm finding odd in... Um, this is a bit of a tangent, but you know we're good at those. So um, the thing that I'm finding odd in some of these games, like Attack from Mars, is the action of the drop targets. They have you noticed that they don't snap down? They sort of like almost like motorized down. 
when you hit them. On what table? I no, I haven't noticed this. So uh, on Attack from Mars, there's a drop target at the back of the um, the saucer that you hit, of course. Um, and you can see it. Um, and it's sort of like, it's rather than going, when you hit it, it doesn't go drop. It sort of goes drop like that. And particularly if you're playing something like Safecracker, I really noticed it when I got that big score the other day. Um, the drop targets in there also, it's almost like the drop targets are sticking on the way down. Like they're being like lubricated with oil and the oil's all clagged up and the drop targets are like like sticking down when they drop. So I was wondering if it was the old... Uh, uh the old Williams drop targets where it wasn't the typical and they drop there well, was no, they an actual mechanical fast. effect that lowered them um no it, it is they they drop just as fast as a godly drop target or any other drop targets okay. i mean they're drop targets they're it's like the zen the way zen's implemented them is they're almost it's like they're almost driven drop targets like there's the motor behind them yeah. to quickly drop them down yeah and i've noticed this in the zen originals as well i think it's just the the way they've programmed the drop targets to work it'd be really nice if they didn't work like that because it Every time I see it, I, I just it breaks the illusion for me. I just go, nah, it's not right. Um, I'm wondering if it's an animation thing where they want to show that they want to show it actually dropping, not just being there one second and gone the next. And maybe oh, that maybe. little bit of animation that they're showing is is ruining the illusion for you. Well, like when you're hitting, I know because I played plenty plenty of times on Attack from Mars. Um, and when you hit that red drop target in the saucer area, it snaps down and up so fast because yeah. it's it's designed to register hits to the saucer and you, it does rattle around in there a fair bit. So it's really obvious to me up there. Like next time, if anyone's online and watching and playing that, just take a look at it next time and you, you can't unsee it once you've seen it. And yes, it's a really small trivial problem and it doesn't affect gameplay at all. Like the ball still behaves correctly around the drop targets, but it's that animation that's just irking me a little bit again. First world problems for me. <laughs> right. It's really not that important, Sen. So if you're listening, don't drop everything and go and fix it, which I'm sure you won't anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let's talk about... Now, Jared uh, lacks commitment because he didn't feel like waking up at four in the morning to watch uh, the California well, stream. It's stream. funny you mentioned that because with the amount of times I was up and down last night with Sienna's diabetes, I probably could have actually tuned in at 4.30 <laughs> to actually do it because i was up at about 4 15 at one point giving her to like the third or fourth glucose treatment for it low so i probably could have just put on some headphones and shoot in live honestly <sighs> so yeah, so that being said i'm going to be doing uh describing <laughs> for his sake what went down but it's basically all information that we already knew um and when i say yeah. we already knew not the you the general public but information that me and jared already knew we're privy to yeah we you know mm. If 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 you've wondered why we kind of skirt around certain topics, it's because we have to. Yeah, for like the last six months, <laughs> <laughs> it's been really hard, guys. But you know, it's it's the problem you get when you're, uh, um, yeah, when, yeah, when you're under the disclosure curtain. <laughs> it's, not, it's it's not the worst problem in the world, but uh, it's certainly not. Again, yeah. first world problems. Yeah, exactly. So but, anyway, uh, uh, let's just let's just jump right in. I'll describe um, other parts of the show, but. Let's just go right into the meat and potatoes, and that is the announcement of the three tables that are going to be in Williams mm. Volume 6, those being Dr. Dude, Funhouse, Space Station. Space Station being brand new to those of us in the digital world, uh, unless you played on Visual Pinball 10, but <laughs> yeah. was not in was not in Pinball Arcade. So we finally have a machine that was not in Pinball Arcade coming into Zen. Yeah. And it's good. That is good. That's a good thing. Um, I initially, when I heard the you know saw what we were going to be getting, I kind of was like, well, I mean, look, I'm all for Funhouse. Believe me. Uh, mm. me being a Pat Lawler fan of course I'm down for Funhouse and Dr. Dude I just kind of was like did I really remember did I enjoy that or was I kind of like eh, you know and then Space Station I have zero experience with um, in real life or if I have I, I barely remembered it I played it once and cheekily I admitted that I played it once in response to a Zen tweet a while back <laughs> <laughs> fully knowing that it was actually in the collection 
just as a bit of a cheeky cheeky plug which obviously i didn't pick up but yes i had played it um at the time that they released the beta probably about six months earlier up at a pub um up the the um coast from where i live and it was the first time i'd ever seen the thing and i tell you what it's uh it really caught me by surprise it was a a very interesting table and um also quite difficult because of the positioning there's no italian bottom on the play field which is return lanes it's just which open. is something i don't like <laughs> it's weird I... it takes a bit of getting used to yeah particularly the the slingshot positions will throw you when you mm -hmm. first played if you haven't played it before mm -hmm. it <clears throat> it uh that's one of the things that i don't like about early ems combination of the two inch flipper and then weird non outlane kind of layouts or non in lane, excuse me. I like in lane pinball. That's that's just me. That's what I'm programmed yeah. for. You like the Italian bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get behind that. Sorry. Um, yeah. but <laughs> it's true. It's what it's called. <laughs> just other things go through my mind. Um, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, but uh, now, yes, we've had this in beta duh um yeah unfortunately we've only had one beta build uh so i don't know how much has changed uh since the beta that we've gotten versus what uh zen is going to be putting out um as usual zen's betas are virtually release ready they're definitely as release ready as anything farsight ever put out uh at release so um I know they're going to be close. For us, the main thing that was going on was with the uh, what happens with the uh, the alphanumeric display. Works perfectly fine in view eight, but uh, in any other view, they still hadn't worked out how it's going to fit into the DMD. Because um, that's, I believe, what's going to be happening is it's going to all fit within where the DMD typically would have been. Which leads me to the question of, and I don't have the answer for, which is what happens on Dr. Dude where it's a strip of uh, alphanumerics rather than stacked on top of each other. Farsight's solution mm. was obviously to stack them. To um, stack them, yeah. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I'm guessing that that's exactly what Zen's going to do also because yeah. of the fact that they only have a limited window because each D, it, it's universal DMD. Whatever size your DMD is, that's what it is across every single other table. And you can't all of a sudden have this one table move and reshape the DMD without them doing some complete redesign of of how that functions in the That's game. That's right. So, and it, would, it wouldn't port over to mobile either because they, they have limited screen real estate on mobile. Exactly. And it's a portrait representation, so there's no way they can do it. I just have to take a break away. Sienna's ripped out her insulin site. And, okay. Um, I, will be, uh, I will happily so talk. Keep, <laughs> yeah, you just keep talking. I'll just mute myself for now. You got it. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about then. Uh why we should be excited actually about these tables. Now, I'm going to start with Space Station. Um, it's brutally different, like we're saying, just because it has the different uh, uh, the different feel of not having an inlane, but just having uh, the outlanes and having the flippers butt up right against the slingshot. Um, and it's, it's also difficult because it is a table that requires aiming and trapping the ball <laughs> when you've got a slingshot right there is a, a pretty brutal feat to try and do. Uh, beyond that, though, the lighting on Space Station is pretty awesome. There's moments where the entire thing just goes green, and uh, it looks gorgeous uh, when, it, when it does that. Um, I thought that it was just kind of an, my initial reaction, I thought it was just an update of Space Shuttle, which is not a table that I've ever been really uh grooving on to begin with mm -hmm. but yeah uh instead it's got it's a little deeper uh has a little more action to it um a little more strategy than i think what space shuttle has so yep. i think it's actually it's a it's a good improvement there um yeah i like space shuttle quite a bit more than uh, sorry space station quite a bit more than space shuttle it's just got more going on um you know, it's got a three wall multi ball instead of a two, um, which is a, a vast improvement. Um, the way you lock balls in it, if you haven't never played it before, will surprise you. Um, it's got a few interesting paths that you use to lock balls. 
So there's that to it as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going for this game. Um, once you get over the um, the the flipper area, I won't say the other one. <laughs> it, it makes it makes Chris a little bit uh, cagey. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, the uh, that area down the bottom there where the flippers are, uh, it will throw you at first. You can still trap up though. Um, there is an area that allows you to trap up, so you can still do that and control the ball. But it's just much more difficult to get that control. Yeah, very hard. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to trap, but it's possible to trap. I found myself um, just the, the the slingshots just playing havoc with me all the time because yeah, I make like even with doing a dead pass, I'm like, oh yeah, just let dead pass. Oh crap, it dead passed right into the slingshot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly right yeah it's uh very odd yeah uh, uh, those slingshots are definitely designed to activate more than a normal slingshots position because the ball will hit on it with more force always um and yeah it will definitely uh trigger more and throw the ball everywhere what's also hard to see in the brief video the announcement video uh that was shown was getting an idea for what the uh, enhancements are that zen did um, mm. Basically, you've got a an astronaut doing a spacewalk in one of those uh, jetpack chairs. Uh, he's yep. kind of floating around. You've got uh, asteroids or meteorites floating around on the table. It's kind of an actually cool. Uh, it's well themed. It is like very the, well the, themed. The space shuttles. Um, when um, I originally played it, in certain views, they actually obscure the inlines at the top, so it might be a little bit challenging for you to. Um, get some of the um, rollover in lane multipliers at the top. But there's actually, there's, when you're playing this in portrait view, if you are able to do that, the, the perspective is great. Like you've got really good, um, <clears throat> really good view of the entire play field and the space shuttles are almost like positioned correctly. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's actually really good. Yeah. So no, and uh, again, Really interesting lighting package, good sound package. Um, I think uh, I think it's a nice addition there. Uh, Funhouse. Well, what can't you like about Funhouse? I will say this though. Exactly. It's brutal in comparison to TPAs, and TPAs oh. wasn't exactly a walk in the park either. <laughs> um, no, it was not easy on TPA, but this thing is hard. <laughs> really hard which is my experience uh, with it in the arcade the every original. single time yeah i mean because yeah. the replay value on it in the arcade is i want to say it's seven million and that's it sounds like a nice low score it's nuts trying to get that that's, it's hard, that's a hard slope. and yeah. and getting the timing right of that mid flipper to shoot not rudy but shoot the uh what is it seller the seller yeah because it's 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 just a slightly longer delay, but it puts it that much closer to the edge of the tip, and it's so easy to miss. And if you think that you're gonna just like you know in TPA, you can kind of get the rhythm and whack four of them in a row. Good luck. It's yeah, it's yeah, you're gonna be having a real hard time getting that done. I mean, I was never really that good at um, making that shot, even in um, TPA. But it's it's very difficult. You're gonna want to select a um, you're gonna want to experiment with the views. So you get a good top-down view of that flipper, so you can actually work out the timing points on it. Um, I think in in views, you know, if you're playing in um, portrait, you know, like the view one and view one wide will give you a pretty good overarching view. But if you're playing in landscape, like on a console, um, I'm not totally sure what one you would want to yeah, choose I, there. Yeah, I do think it's a, not quite as brutal as No Good Gophers with how they have that set up because no good gophers it seems like the ball just because of everything obscuring it just it's it just suddenly there. yeah it's, yeah it's so oh, hard to geez. so this one you're actually going to be able to see the ball yeah <laughs> moving and, and be able to attack it that way but uh i i know that in, when i play funhouse for real and i know the ball is coming there and i need to flip i angle myself really low on the table just to give myself a fighting chance um, yeah and it's just as tough here with what what they've done i um, think um that one would be you know if it ever makes it to vr would be a very good addition oh yeah you could then you know look over the top and check it out yeah <clears throat> but um yeah all those ones are like that i find myself doing that all the time on willy wonka as well in the arcade there's a really obscured flipper in the top right 
that you almost need to lean over all the way to the left to be able to get the timing right on, or at least mm-hmm. for me. It's hard. You, you really do sometimes benefit from being able to move around the table. Yeah. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, again, this was, this was probably the table that I wanted more beta testing uh, versions on because mm. I know that a lot of notes got given regarding it. Um, so because like for us, the eject uh, coming out was really strong, uh, making it really hard to to gain control of the ball, which that hasn't been my experience. Um, and there there were a couple of little other issues uh, of the the plunger. If you're playing in just regular Zen mode, uh, the plunger worked great. If you're playing in uh, classic arcade or tournament, the plunger was like. If you breathed wrong, it was too strong. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you couldn't make that skill shot at all. No, no. So, uh, again, I'm not going to comment necessarily on on that stuff and get as a critique because that was just purely in beta. So we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, Mm. Visuals on Funhouse, they do have an animated Rudy who uh, climbs into his little bed. um, And there's balloons that pop up. There's all sorts of stuff. There is some stuff that I'm not quite sure works as well, uh, yeah. theming wise, because it almost makes the top of the play field a little clunky. Again, we'll yes. see if any of that gets uh, gets changed from from what we've last seen it with. I, I don't think it will. Like usually, when they set the theme for the game, um, it's very rare for for um, it to be changed in a lot of yeah. detail after they've actually set the theme. So I think we're we're stuck with that area. Uh, I think there's plenty of other things they could have done on that table. Well, I think they could have taken cues that they did from um, Circus Voltaire and animated Rudy a little bit more beyond the solenoid-driven um, eyes and uh, motor-driven mouth. Um, actually animate the head a bit more. Um, but, you know, that's probably the only big thing that um, I think they uh, they could probably tweak on it everything yeah. else it's all right i mean like, i can almost say you know, safely that that's one of those that i'm going to play without the enhancements on yeah you probably don't really need it yeah um yeah. and then moving over to dr dude which mm. once i started playing it i realized it's oh yeah you just don't like party zone that much and tpa's dr dude was ridiculously easy was and it was also <laughs> rather horribly presented as well oh like, god um, yeah it was a visual visual kind of nightmare it um, really was to which and i like, can you know drop drop polygons like everywhere on the table like stuff that you know when you see it in zen when you actually start playing you go wow that's actually in the game i had no idea and you and know. i can safely say zen has knocked this one out of the park it is probably the highlight of the package for me like it is so the theme is so well integrated and the visual extras they've added to this table actually enhance the gameplay. Absolutely. This is uh, one that I will play with visual enhancements all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Um, it's and, very, I, and I found good. in my beta testing, I almost always started with Dr. Dude and almost always finished with Dr. Dude. Um, yeah. The, let's just start with the gameplay itself. Uh, the ball is so much more wild. And yeah, there were so many railroads in... TPA's version, and those are all gone, and yep. so it just really makes this table that much more difficult. Um, yeah, and there it is. It's the challenge of the table. Once the table is challenging, it becomes so much more fun. Otherwise, it's without the challenge, it was just wash and repeat, wash and repeat. Wash it's and just repeat. ramp, ramp, ramp. Get the yeah, yeah. You know, um, come, dude. But getting watch, dudes in this is hard. Oh yeah, watching and the physics of the ball in the in the. Uh, what do they call it? It's not the spinner, but... Um, the uh, Mix Master. Mix Master. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. Watching it, and you can see all the animations that are going on in there with the ball hitting the stand-ups and everything. There is a lot of extra going on there that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Um, no, but, but it's it there. Is. Yeah. Because it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you do enhancements, all of a sudden there's electrical pulses going down all the wiring. Yeah. Um, and looks so good. Yeah, all sorts of various things happening on the play field itself. And then you ultimately, though, you have the dude on the side of the table. And as you increase up the dude meter, his outfit changes and he gets different accessories uh, to ultimately yeah. become 
the party Super dude. dude. Super dude. Uh, yeah. Again, now, here's where we go into what we were dealing with in the beta, and who knows if this gets improved, and I hope, hope that they did something about this. But filling that dude chart is difficult. Very difficult. Mm. And it's one of those ROM states that carried over from game to game. So if you didn't, whoever played it before you, that's the, the state that you start at. Um, that's right. So It's progressive jackpot sort of stuff that you see in a lot of that era of games. Yes. And it's necessary because there's almost no way that you're going to, you know, the average player is going to sit there and on three balls go through the entire progression. It's just not a reality. It's really hard to do. Yeah, you've got to do a lot yeah. of, of mix master shots and a lot of, you know, three three elements to actually get the mix master lit. It takes a fair bit of a while. So it's designed to be progressive. And it's sort of like part of the fun of the game when you walk up to it and you go, oh, it's nearly about to go off as super dude. I might drop a couple of bucks into this. It's also part of the it. game where if you're playing multiplayer with four other people, that it becomes You can build that, up that score. Well, and it becomes you stealing it from somebody else. Yeah. You know, so... That's an I, interesting point. I've never actually tried full player on it, and maybe that's a way to actually see what Super Dude, dude actually does, because <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually hit it before. Yeah, no, it's it, I've done that in real life uh, with these kind of progressive tables, and that's the fun. It, it becomes part of your strategy if you're playing and you're not having the best of success, and you can easily do a ball lock or do something that progresses it to the next you kind of go, wait, do I set the next guy up for that? Or do I not do it, do some other things in the meantime, I'm going to lose my ball and let them be the ones that progress it. Um, yeah. It, it becomes kind of a different strategy that goes along with it. Uh, so yes, I'm Jay hoping... William, exactly the same as the five volt letters in Safe Cracker, yeah. which also I've never got on Zen because it's kind of impossible so, and frustrating. Believe I me, would really like that. it's a note that we have given them. And we gave them a long time ago, and I'm. We keep giving it to them. We keep giving them. Hopefully, they're aware and they were able to find a solution to it. Uh, because, yeah. and this is kind of a general note about this era of table. Uh, there are certain things that Zen, because they're kind of they're focused so much on what they do, and we the players kind of notice and have our things that we like to see. But it's hard when you've got all these factors that you're trying to work in to notice the little fringe items. And so ROM carryover state was one of those little fringe because that's not really a thing that is an issue in uh, DMD machines. Yeah, so that's right. That's uh, uh, one of those things that we definitely gave a note on. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed, folks, that that, gets, uh, th that actually happened. Um, I've got to go and change a pump site. Keep talking. Okay. I'll, I'll listen and try and talk in as well. But All right, no worries. But I a new pump site. No worries. Um, so, yeah, those are, the, those are the three tables. Now, I then immediately after the announcement, I went and, uh, you know, went to the various forums that I visit, pinball-related, kind of seeing people's reactions and stuff. And unfortunately, these tables... Had all gotten leaked last week, uh, thanks to an errant video that popped up momentarily on Zen's YouTube channel. So yeah, it's hard. It, just, it made it into a playlist, and if you subscribe to the channel, you would have seen it come up the playlist, and for a few fleeting seconds, gain access to it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's hard to gauge what people's reactions were. Uh, I know a lot of people are excited uh, for definitely for Funhouse, and they're thrilled to see. Uh, Space Station something new coming yeah, yeah something exactly. new which has definitely yeah. been something that everybody's been begging for um, I mean yeah. I've seen many comments where they're like I'm not buying any more Zen until there's something new well there's now something new folks there's now something <laughs> new so go and buy it alright <laughs> <laughs> right um, we're going to touch upon though kind of what the reactions to all of Zen's announcements were but first we got to talk about actually what happened today in the uh, in this California Extreme Expo 2020 event that Zen yeah. basically hosted because this was going to be canceled outright uh, they knew that they couldn't do it in person and uh, it and was sort of these it's a type of event that you kind of really do need to be there in person for because it's all about playing games yes like it's yeah. so basically this is what they instead did was what you know they always have panels uh, with people doing talks and so basically that's what's being broadcast is what was going to be doing there so they started off with uh, having a panel with uh, Stern 
about Stranger Things, and it was with uh, Brian Eddy and Mike uh, Vinokour. And it was kind of interesting. They walked through uh, basically the creation of Stranger Things. Uh, Brian started with, look, when I start any pinball design, it starts with this, and it was just a on his computer screen, a blank play field with flippers and slingshots, and that was it. Um, and then he says that he kind of sketches it out and builds up from there and it becomes a foam core model. And then it seems like there must be a bin of just random... I, I imagine it's like a Lego wall, but it's a wall of ramp parts and stuff. And they just kind of start assembling. And he kind of went basically through the whole design process, which was really uh, quite interesting to see, at least from my point. I don't know. Um, and... Uh, From there, after they got done uh, doing their talk, uh, it moved into Jack Danger, who his channel, Dead Flip Pinball. Uh, Jack had decided to build his own pinball machine, which seems absolutely absurd to me, <laughs> um, especially given the time frame that he was saying that he was doing it in. He said he designed it in 24 hours and basically called in all sorts of favors to uh, help him get it up and running. Uh, considering how much my micro cab cost with next to nothing parts wise, I can't imagine what it costs to uh, build a full physical pinball machine. Uh, so he went over that whole deal and then uh, it switched over to the interview with Zen that Jack hosted and he was talking to uh, Akos and Mel Kirk. Um, a lot of the info was stuff that we actually talked with Mel previously about. However, hats off to Jack for cramming that all into 15 minutes. He's much more efficient than me and Jared are. No doubt about that. Um, and within that, what new information could possibly gleam, gleamed out of it, uh, Mel talked once more about their focus on the future, uh, it's, it's, there's this 10 year plan that they've kind of been uh, touting and regarding the main thing being moving into new markets and we keep on reiterating this but it's basically meaning Asia and as he mentioned that IPs and pinball are intrinsically linked and if you're going to go into a new market then you need to have uh, licensing that makes sense for that market. And if you start extrapolating any of that, that means we're probably going to see a lot of uh, anime, uh, Japan heavily influenced uh, pop culture, Korean pop culture uh, kind of things. I think those are the, the intellectual properties that are going to be starting to be licensed. Uh, and that's stuff that we haven't necessarily seen. Jack Wynn said that he just wants a Sanrio Hello Kitty table, which was kind of amusing. I can, God, my God, the pink and white, that would be, <laughs> that would be a sight for, for eyes, huh? It's just like fluffy unicorn table or something. Um, so there was that. Mel went into, and there, I want to clear up kind of, some of the comments that I was reading weren't clear. Because people were hoping that he was mentioning new physics and putting physics into, you know, obviously everybody's thinking, oh, we're going to get the, the new Williams physics backtracked onto the, those first three volumes that didn't have them. Uh, what Mel was talking about was that each pinball machine that they have, they tune the game to that physical machine that they have on site. They don't, and, that, and we've said this many a time, one pinball machine does not play like the next pinball machine, even though they're the exact same title. So that's yeah, what he was talking about. Yeah, that's no, what he was talking about like, physics-wise. It's not yeah. uh, new physics for you know each and every table or whatever. No, it's that the physics of that table is for what they have there in front of them. Um, yeah. That's what they're modeling that's right. after. And that's the only thing they can judge the physics on, because how are they going to cater for a machine that they don't have allegedly does something when something hits something you know that's yeah. they can only do 
physics modeling on the physical table that they have. So that's what you get. Well, and I it's, see people all the time going, well, I was watching the Papa video. It's like, for God's dude, sakes, don't the judge off the do Papa video. Papa video. <laughs> yeah, the stuff they do on Papa, they remove, they actually remove entire like sets of protective posts. So there's nothing there. And they put like super bands on them and they put everything to make it so brutal because they know the quality of player is exceptional. When and then on top Papa. of that, the, the player that's doing the tutorial has mad skills and makes it all look so easy. So you're expecting yeah. that you're going to be able to do this, you know, awesome flipper trick uh, because it looks so easy. And it's like, no, you don't understand the combination of factors that this person is calculating on the fly to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, they are able to adapt to pretty much any machine and they are able to work out, oh, okay, so I just need to like adjust that time by a couple of milliseconds to actually get the result on it because they're that good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so that was, yeah. that was, let's clear that up <laughs> um, he mm -hmm. uh, about what, what was being mentioned about physics. And then Mel mentioned, and I, I, I can't remember exactly what my ears heard. He said, v I want to say he said VR, but he also said AR. Uh, which is what kind of perked Jack's ears up. Uh, I don't know exactly how that's going to play in. Um, shoot, I can imagine if the AR was, you know, it, it's seeing the room that you're in and having the digital pinball machine there as your plan. I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see. But anyway, they're, it, that's the kind of tech forward that they're that they're talking about, basically. Um, mm. That was kind of all the only new that came from uh, that conversation, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, augmented reality, I, th I almost think it was a bit of a gaffe. I think he might have meant VR. Yeah. I, I don't think augmented reality would actually add much to being able to play pinball. Like, no. It, having, it, the only thing it would do is project the table into your own environment so you could sort of like walk up to it and play it <laughs> in your room. But even then, like, I wouldn't want that. Yeah. I'd actually want to, the table to be completely zoomed in and I could care less about the room. Yeah. Like, you could take all the environmentals away from me and it wouldn't actually detract from the play field uh, or anything, play experience yeah. for me. In VR, of course, yes, the environments are kind of cool in that. But, like, if it was just AR um, in regular Zen mode without VR, nah, not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But uh, beyond that, that was about the extent of everything they talked about. Uh, in terms of release date for these three tables, uh, and, and here, AJ, just so you know what the reveal was, because he just popped in and says, I missed things. Uh, so the, when will we be seeing Funhouse, Dr. Dude, and Space Station? Uh, they didn't put a release date, and I think part of that is because this is all pre-recorded. But the typical mm. cycle has been whenever they do an announcement, it's two to three weeks that all of a sudden it gets released. So it's going to be pretty dang soon. I can got to believe. Um, yeah, usually. After yeah. announcement, they usually do it like it's a month typically. So you could probably put a month on it and probably be pretty much right, I think. Oh, yeah. It's, it's previous, definitely previous inside events. a month. I, I'm going to go two to three weeks. I think it's honestly mm. going to be two weeks from now, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after the Zen presentation, 1UP uh, had a small presentation. It was basically uh, just uh, Jason Mattern talking. <laughs> there was no visuals. Um, he made mention of basically talking about how uh, Arcade 1UP got into uh, wanting to make one of these physical machines. Uh, obviously, you're going to get one that's a Star Wars, one that's Marvel Pinball, and one that is uh, Williams Pinball. And but the new information, this was information that we've been trying to get, <laughs> uh, and nobody's been able to answer. But he was able to just spit it out. Was not only is there going to be a solenoid or haptic feedback? He, I don't think he actually said solenoid, but he was talking uh, about haptic feedback. But haptic, haptic feedback, feedback on the flippers. So there's one for each flipper, and then he said that there is two midfield, and I'm hmm. guessing that they're probably stacked, uh, you know, higher and then mid, and the Interesting thing, because I just figured it would be from hot bumpers, but he's saying that you can actually feel ball roll, which is a yeah. very, very interesting uh, aspect of real pinball. So this is an interesting development because if that's the case, then solenoids aren't probably what they're using in there. And there's a number of reasons why that makes a great deal of sense. 
Number one, solenoids are prone to breaking. We know this in pinball. Every solenoid breaks eventually. Um, but what doesn't break is a transducer. So if you don't know what a transducer is, it's a type of speaker that um, translates not to sound, but to vibration. Um, you'll see them in a lot of arcade games to give you that rumble feel um, when you're in a game. I think a lot of the um, the Sega games like that uh, that truck driving game that used to be in the, the um, arcades use transducers to give you that sort of big engine feel uh, in the... Um, uh, in the game and it can often replace a, um, a vibrator motor as well so what these things do is they <clears throat> you don't need a big speaker either to do it um, but what they do is they they have sub frequencies that you can't hear with the human ear but they translate into vibrations through the cabinet so that's how they're going to be able to do um, ball roll vibrations and stuff and and from a maintenance perspective all they need is a separate amplifier to drive them, not an entire like bridge rectifier system and you know trans uh, uh, transistors and all that sort of stuff. It's just it's just an amplifier. Sure, amplifiers have transistors in them too, but they're far less prone to actually breaking. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. You might even find that um, the the flipper ones are actually not solenoids either. They may actually be transducers as well. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see what the final final thing is with that. Yeah, I I mean, hopefully it's not obnoxious feeling. Like, <laughs> where I you're like it will Ugh. be if I you don't... do it well. It's um so to give you an idea of what transducers are, you may have already experienced these if you go to laser tag and you wear one of those vests, and whenever you get hit, you get like a punch in the chest with a, a vest. Th those things are transducers. That are in there okay um they also uh there's actually a headphone um system out there at the moment where you get the headphones and this sort of a, a strap that goes over you with just one of these little transducers on it oh for and subwoofer it, feel yeah and it feels like it feels the people who use it say it feels like i'm actually in a club because you get that sort of resonant vibration through your body hmm. with the transducer so it done right and you can pretty much guarantee with the uh, pedigree that um arcade one up has um and zen has it will be done right the the way that they can use transducers in this could be really really interesting and also too they could probably fire the transducers in subtly different ways to actually sort of almost stereoscopically that's what i was thinking vibration yeah. where it needs to be so, you know, you'll have flippers and and slingshots down the bottom and then you'll have pop buttons and stuff up the top. But depending on what's going on in the game, like say in the case of um, uh, Circus Voltaire, if you hit the ringmaster, there is a certain degree of mechanical feedback you feel when you do that in the game. So the chances are you'll feel this little sort of a, a touch in the cabinet when you're actually doing that. So I almost think that transducers in this particular respect are going to be better than solenoid feedback. And see, this and it might a... actually it might actually pave the way for you know people who set up these pin cabs at home to actually consider them as a viable alternative to solenoids. I'm just wondering in the case of with what Zen is doing with Arcade One Up, uh, obviously it has to be coded into the game itself uh, to work properly and. So I'm wondering what happens with the inevitable person that mods their cabinet and uh, puts just a, puts in a Steam version so they can have all the tables if then the transducers will work even at all. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, in the Steam comments, Dave VP confirms that transducers are freaking amazing in pinball cabs. He actually had the comments that he actually removed the two contactors he had, um, which is what they refer to as the things that like hit elements of the cabinet to transfer vibration so he's got what they call two exciters and a bass transducer in the pin cabinet he says it's it's amazing so there you go good move on zen and arcade one-ups part and maintenance free basically which yeah. is a great obviously something you need to consider when you're doing these exactly so, yeah very good. exactly so uh yeah that was the uh the other information uh, confirmed eight inch dmd and accelerometer um no date for release other than sometime in the fall uh, for, the, yeah. for the three cabs so which which is n n you know not really news but you know we sort of uh um we kind of figured it <laughs> yeah um 
Oh, we're getting corrected on uh, Farsight stacking the alphanumerics in the Bally, not in landscape mode, but in uh, portrait mode. Yeah. So again, that's what you were saying, Jared, with uh, when playing on mobile. Yeah. That uh... you got to you got to understand that I didn't play Pinball Arcade on Steam. It was only on mobile, so that's my own experience. So yeah, it was stacked for me all the time. Pinball Wiz. And it's been so long since I've booted it up that I couldn't remember. <laughs> but good to know that they actually did that because you know if you got the real estate. You could just make the component that you're using to render that um, responsive and just display the things either in like a, a linear mode or stacked. I mean, that's if I was doing it, I, that's how I'd code it. Like I said, I just, I hope that I, I, I don't, I don't see beyond them completely redesigning how their DMD displays. Um, Cause me in cabinet mode, once I set my DMD on my second screen and sized it, it's permanent. It doesn't alter yeah. at all, which was kind of a bummer because I kind of had to. Some of the some of the artwork had slightly smaller DMD, or the DMD was slightly moved, and I just kind of had to pick a centralized location. And you know, sometimes the DMD went over the edges. Sometimes the underside you, you can see. So uh, you know, I made it so that the, it, you kind of just have to pick a universal option, and. I don't see them doing, like I said, eliminating the DMD entirely and putting a strip down the bottom for one table. No. Well, you know, there are more tables in that era of pinball that have those linear displays. Right. right. And it would, you know, essentially pave the way for them to do that. But, you know, speaking to the whole cabinet mode thing, again, this would come down to making that that element of the, uh, the Zen pinball experience a responsive component. So when in cabinet mode they flip it to stacked when the screen has real estate they flip it to uh, lineal you know th this sort of stuff is not this sort of solve problems when you're actually designing interfaces yeah. like this so yeah, if they can do it they will and as pinball Wiz says there's prior art with what farsight did so yeah you know, uh, chances are they'll probably do it anyhow so let's talk for a second about the other thing that nobody's really mentioning alphanumerics folks they're now right? a thing <laughs> <laughs> this this is a thing, right? And it's a thing in a big way. Like you Oops. know, all three tables are alphanumerics here. Um, so now, yeah, that's huge. We'll also say this: if you're wondering about the delays or whatever, you're dealing with computer chips that run slower than today's modern computer, and the emulating the alphanumerics completely different than emulating DMDs. And I think there is a lot of uh, uh, hiccups that yep. need to get worked out between everything talking nicely to each other. The good news is that they've obviously figured it out. Yeah. Now they that they have it figured out for to these, release it now. Yeah. Now they have it figured out for these. Doing the next batch of tables that has alphanumerics is going to be that much easier because yep. the kinks have been worked out. Or, well, I shouldn't say, I don't know how much the kinks have been worked out, but there's now a workflow. <laughs> We, we certainly did some see some stuff in the early betas that you know were clearly emulation issues um and those things i think are the things that would have taken the, the hardest time you know it's one of those things when you're doing software development sometimes it's those 10 percent that left over that are the hardest things to fix yeah. and i really do think that this like managing the the rom state and doing all that sort of fine tuning and also performance as well considering that this is going to be on very different platforms with very different system requirements is something that when you're developing across platforms like this would really start to become quite challenging uh, for, for you know, doing that sort of performance benchmarking and getting it right. So I kind of get why they've held, held it over. Admittedly, it's frustrating, of course, because they had to, but we saw what happens when you don't hold things over with Pimble Arcade. And I certainly wouldn't want that to happen again. Yeah, I'd much rather have a delay that gets things right than have yeah. an early release that then requires a whole bunch of patches, which who knows if they'll actually happen because as we know with uh, software development, hey man, once you get people buying the product, why do you need to go back and fix it? That's right. I mean, unless the game broke, but that's kind of just the reality of, of what it is. I know that we kind of expect game companies now because now game companies are so intent on meeting a release date that day one there's you know 
a 15 gig day one patch. patches. <laughs> day zero patches. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't think that Zen necessarily wants to go that route. And so I will happily accept a, a delay if that means not Quality. having to have, uh, you know. And again, this just harkens back to us wanting the the new Williams physics on those first three volumes. Mm. Um, there's not a big priority to do it. Yes, Zen wants to do it. And conversely, because they want to go back to that, now we've got them on board doing it across the board for even the originals. But it's just a question of when is that going to get implemented. That's um, right. This is a big job. It is a big job, and they don't want to... I think it's going to be that they want to do just a one-day patch, not, okay, here's part one of the patch, and we'll do part two of the patch later. And, and because yeah. it helps them build up excitement and hype to be able to say, hey, guess what? Everything is done. And people then get excited about it rather than doing what feels like a a bug fix. Yeah, essentially iterations, like multiple iterations every month or so with each new release. I mean, there's two schools of thought. Like if you're thinking about agile software development, what Farsight was doing technically was right. But the problem is that they didn't follow through in a lot of cases and they didn't actually do the polish that they needed to, which is what Zen is doing now. So... For me, I'd be happy if you know I you know, could see a change log that Zen released to say, "Hey, look, yeah, we've got um, Williams f f physics on these three tables," and then you go and play those tables and enjoy them in a new way, um, you know. But sort of doing like a massive tuning run throughout all the tables is something that it would take months to do, and I'm not sure if from a, a realizing value and being a, a, a de delighter of customers, if that's really the right way to go. Um, also too, releasing it regularly means that they can collect feedback and see and measure whether releasing those fixes to those tables sees an increase in downloads or purchases, which would then validate investing more time into it and more development costs into it in the future. So. Mel's all about that sort of stuff and Zen builds their business on metrics and data as we well know, Chris. So I think probably they would end up doing incremental fixes rather than one big massive patch. Okay. Mm. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting too because in the Stranger Things talk with Stern, uh, they were mentioning about patches uh, mm. your, you know, to code that they haven't quite come up with the 1.0 code for, for Stranger Things. And they kind of were mentioning that a lot of it is basing it off of feedback of play and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. basically letting everybody out there with a physical machine be the beta testers and giving them response while they work out some of the, uh, the deeper modes and, and what's working. And, and I mean, we saw that, that, you know, that pattern really heavily used in Batman 66. Like they released a game that was basically bare bones code and they iterated on it for about two years to get it to the point where it is now where it if you were patient and you held on to the game you're rewarded with what is an incredibly deep game and an incredibly great game if you know the rules the other thing that's really neat about that is as you start to see the rules coming in it actually lets you learn them so you can actually build up your knowledge of the rules rather than have to learn it all in one hit, which in a game like Batman 66 is very, very difficult, you know. But yeah. if you're stuck with it, you can trickle feed these rules and it's like get them into your muscle memory. So then you can actually explore the game more. And that Batman 66 game really was targeted at home use. So, you know, if you apply that same logic to what Zen are doing here, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, sort of. Um Yo, great. Just lost a train of thought. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> oh, You're I know welcome. what I was going to say. I, right? I know what I was going to say. Uh, back to the idea of, of alphanumerics. Um, now that those are a thing, do you folks realize how many more pinball tables now are potentially uh, can be done? Heaps. Um, and there are it tons that were never put into Pinball Arcade either. Uh, oh. I mean, I think about the, the System 11 tables alone. I think half of them didn't get put in, Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now, realistically, how far back are we going to go? And I would guess 
you're looking at 1980. And I say 1980 because that's when Firepower, 8-Ball Deluxe, Centaur. Mm. That's about... I, I, if you go back any farther, you're talking about Bally Wide Bodies, like Future Spa, Space Invaders. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do those. I, I really don't think they're going to go there. And if you go them before those, now you're into essentially EMs or... EMs that that's got stalled state converted. And yeah, that's way too far back for Zen. And I don't think they need to go back that far because, again, no. we're talking about easily 40 to 60 tables within this era that people are going to want to see. That's right. And you know, you know, Pinball Wiz rightly says it was around 1986 when you started to see the first real introduction of alphanumerics. Up until then, it was just numerics. And I just think... For the Zen audience, it was fine for Pinball Arcade because they had a very different mission that they were trying to do, which is preserve pinball. And some of those titles before 1986 were important titles from a historical perspective. But really, for the fun side of things, when you start to get into alphanumerics, you start to get things more stabilized like multiballs and modes, like basic modes and stuff like that. So for the Zen audience, that's probably more appropriate. Yeah, I think that's where the, the majority of them will come from. But mm. I really... God, I want to see Centaur in Pinball FX. I really want to see Centaur. Centaur would be a nice exception, wouldn't it? Yeah, so and I think... imagine what they could do with the uh, visuals on that. Because it needs it. It needs visuals. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I saw uh, CPR Playfields or Rest... I can't remember what the CPR stands for. Anyway, they... they Custom Playfield Restorations. There you go. They do yeah. uh, uh, reprints or, or mm. redos of Playfields. And they're, you know, clear-coated. Beautiful. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They did a run of Centaur that's colorized. I don't Whoa. like it. It's odd. You don't like it? <laughs> I don't like it. It's really kind of... It looks like somebody, you know... Took a, a little, texture to it? A little kid took their colored pencils and started using it as a coloring book. Um, yeah. But it's an interesting... If you've ever wanted to know what it looks like, just go to their website and, and take a gander. It's kind of... Uh, if you've ever thought, oh, I wonder what this would look like with color. There you go. I think the insert light colors are enough <laughs> on that one. Um, mm. But yeah, no, I think that there's, there's a couple pre-86, between that 1980 and 86 that would make for good additions into the Zen family. Um, I don't mm. think you need certainly all of them by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But it's very good. Like it's um, you know, setting the pace for the the next ten years or so. But know, there's also said, all those oddball hand. ballet tables that they can do now. Um, I forget they're not they're not considered system eleven, they're like the eighty system eight. System eight. Like no, that. not system eight. It wasn't system at all, but because Bally wasn't part of Williams at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, Blackwater. Yeah, that's a really good one to, to put in there. That's a very unique game that would uh, be quite interesting to experience with Bonzo Run. Oh, actually, that was technically a System 11. I think it's a System 9 and System 11. That's when they first started, started introducing the concepts of systems. Um, so, yeah, the ones that are, I guess commonly referred to as System 11s aren't really System 11s. There's a a technicality. Um, I think it's chip speed that uh, differentiates them. So anyway, that's you what we're saying. Really though, that, nerdy, you know. Okay, right? <laughs> oh boy, uh, I'll let you get nerdy in a moment. Um, yeah, eleven B. That's right. Yeah. The uh, uh, just the potential of tables that are out there, though, that uh, we can look forward to. I know people are like, "Oh, I want these license tables," and I know people are like, "Ah, when are we getting stern?" This is why I don't believe we're seeing Stern anytime soon, because Zen is the pattern is full. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, Zen wants to get the most bang for their buck in the shortest period of time, and that's how you do it. You pay a hmm. large sum of money for a license, and, and then you exploit the living out of it for a short. It's kind of like what what I see with car restorations, where the quicker you can do the restoration means the lower the labor cost. If the labor mm -hmm. cost is low, then the cost of your initial investment returns stronger. But if you take months and months to churn somebody else's, you know, vehicle out, well, now you're doing storage, you're doing labor, you're doing, you know, it's all these other factors that just raise everything up. So I think that Zen is going to approach this with, let's just bang out as many Williams and Bally tables as possible before 
going over to Stern. And because Stern mm. is, I mean, other than a very few tables, is every single table is licensed. Yeah. I can only imagine that you get a license table and then, wait for it, Zen Original tables, which people have been yeah. clamoring for now. They're like, we want, bring back the Zen Originals. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now you get some Zen Originals bridging the gap between what you would get for license table wise. But I think we'll see mo- once we've, our, we've had our first pack of licenses with the uh, monster pack. Mm. Once we see a few more, I think we'll understand what Zen's approach to the licensed world of Williams is. And then you're going to apply all that knowledge towards the inevitable getting of, of Stern. Yeah. Cause it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, like I'm I'm very confident to predict that Stern will happen, and oh. that's probably you know part of the next ten year plan. You know, so well, and and, yeah. and I keep on saying this deal with Arcade One Up because once you start seeing the potential market, because there's a big difference between paying five to six hundred bucks for an Arcade One Up machine versus paying eight thousand dollars for a pinball machine. Yeah, but we all know how the addiction is. Once you get mm-hmm. once you get your foot in the door, you start looking to get your arm in the door, and then next thing you know, you're going full body. So and, yeah, and uh, next thing you know, you've got a whole room full of pinballs. Right, and and I <laughs> think that stern eyes will open up that much more, seeing these cabinets go in, and that it's not competing with their product. But instead, it's actually l- enlarging, making larger the base uh, potential customer. Like we said very early, even with Farsight, that it's like Stern's partnership with Farsight when it was in its early days was, you know, basically a marketing vehicle for them. You know, people are still going to want to walk up to the thing in the arcade and play the real thing because I can tell you that playing Stranger Things Premium in the arcade is an incredible experience that you cannot replicate on a home console. It, you just you can't it is just incredible like the thing i don't know if you played it or had an opportunity i haven't i have not seen it in person man this thing is incredible it's got like a pico projector in the apron that Mm -hmm. like projects onto white surfaces onto the um play field objects and it's very well integrated but not only that it's got a completely black lit play field mask over it that when you go into the upside down the entire play field changes yes it is just incredible to see the first time my jaw dropped and that sort of thing it it, you can do it in digital sure with the right effects and everything but you see that thing in life like in front of the machine do it it's like nothing else so jared you're gonna really want to go watch that uh twitch stream of of their about stranger things yeah because they go into all that it's (laughs) so good Yeah. yeah yeah it's uh it's an amazing pin but at the same um, time so here you are you've played it it's amazing you know it's amazing, but do you got the money to put one in your house? No way. I don't have the <laughs> no. space either. But right. you know, if I can get it digitally and and learn the rules, and then go and translate those rules into like have a clue of how to play it in the arcade, well, that would make me play it in the arcade more. Honestly, it would. Right. Because I know how to play it. I know how to have fun on it. Because that's the hardest part. Like, of course. You know, you got the flip side of that from an earnings perspective. Like, you know, if you know how to play it really well. The idea is to kind of learn how to play it really well. Yeah, but that's the that's the operator's problem, not uh... that is the operator's problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's not ours. No. Yeah. No. Um. So that's why I'm saying I think Stern just needs some convincing, but they're going to see the light of day, and by the time they see the light of day, I think that Zen will be ready for them. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Because again, it's just a timing issue right now. You know, and it, it, Zen stated that a while back, with they were offered the Williams license at a time when they were doing you know Portal and Walking license. Dead, and they already had a full plate, and they were like, "We can't take it on. We can't do it justice if we take it on right now. Doesn't make yeah. sense for us to take it on right now. Come back." Mm. Yeah. So they know right. how to do it. I want to because I found this highly amusing. Um, mm. I guess, you know what, Jared, we're going to talk about, this will give us, hey, we we tend to want to cram as much as possible into one podcast, and sometimes you just need to spread it out. Um, we're, going to t- <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, the reaction, the online reaction 
to uh, the announcements because it's kind of been mixed bag. Some of you are very disappointed that you didn't get the world offered to you after waiting seven months. Um, yeah. <laughs> but what I did find amusing was uh, over on Digital Pinball Fans, I don't even know what thread it was, but uh, the mention of... Oh, doing... it was the Zen. The Zen um, general th thread, I think. Okay. Yeah. But there was a, basically a discussion about, is it Linux or Linux? I always thought it was Linux. 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 Um, Linux implementation that Zen has not done that. And Jared yeah. popped in and just kind of gave a brief logical answer. And then the person that he uh, gave that to jumped down his throat. So I wanted to let Jared a chance to respond. It's a real shame because I haven't even read the response. Oh, no! <laughs> so oh, I should probably bring it up, eh? You should, uh, because it literally went from 0 to 100 like that. I mean, we're like... I knew it would... You were giving a, a, a nice, logical business uh, answer as to why it wouldn't necessarily make sense. And yeah. this guy went into the whole cabal of Microsoft being this monopoly that has swallowed up everybody and is making us all oh, think really? the laid so that it's we don't... That, uh, oh, I thought you had actually read this, Jared. No, oh. no. See, the thing is that I, I only consume digital pinball pa fans through um, what is uh, the Tapper Talk app. And, you know, sometimes it tells me about stuff and sometimes it, it doesn't really tell me that much about stuff. So... Like I'll check in occasionally and, you know, it was really just something I responded to late at night. So I wasn't really thinking it would uh, be, you know, particularly um, <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> it seems to have done so. So, um, well, let me tell, just you go what, tell you what, Jared, I'm going to let mm. you uh, look at it and we'll throw this into the talk next time so that you can uh, properly digest everything that's said because it's quite hilarious. Um, Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like it's a it's a big read. So it sounds yeah, so like a neat... that's what I'm saying. This isn't something that you can just briefly uh, look at. I, I I had thought that you had already uh, read it and had a good chuckle. Uh, so the rest of you, if you want to have a good chuckle, uh, Jared, what what uh, thread is it exactly? Um, I'm looking. Uh, so oh, gee, I can't even find it. <laughs> it's, I'm using the web interface. It's basically like alien to me. Because oh. it's so different to Tepper Talk, oh, okay. um, but um, it'll be in. I think it's Wait, general think game discussions in. Looks studios. like Pinball Wiz just posted a link. Let's see if. Uh... Oh, thank you, Pinball Wiz, for un for, <laughs> for helping us out here because it was a bit brutal. Um, <laughs> um, oh yeah. Oh, here we go. All, almost. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's the it's the uh, Williams Collection Volume Six guesses thread on Digital Pinball fans, and uh, it's near the end of that whole thread uh, if you want to give it a read for yourself. And we'll, I'll let Jared respond next week about that too. So yeah. that'll... Uh... Oh, look, I don't really think it deserves response, being perfectly honest, <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> it's, it's just somebody, you know... Maybe, maybe Jared will have to re just respond on the, the, the thread and you all can pay attention that way and uh, enjoy it. I don't, know, I don't know, I just get a kick out of somebody losing their minds over something that literally... 99.999% of us could care less about <laughs> and, and two, them making it the number one priority in life. So, so that's two pin fans points um, that he originally posed, like uh, getting past the fact that he's frustrated that he can't play it on Linux and steam does have a way technically of playing games on Linux with, with a little bit of messing around, not too much, but a little bit of messing around like the, it seems like, steam are definitely investing in the idea of it which is you know it's great to see and the point in the um video that um when you look at the uh um the the software that actually allows you to do it um it it seems like they you know they've got the right idea but um, it is linux and I've I worked for Red Hat for 6 years right it's one of the largest commercial open source software companies and i've used red hat linux and i've used uh enterprise linux and i've used fedora which are all distros you know and i i know the problem that these things have with doing anything relating to media like trying to get a video card to work and yes nvidia is investing very nicely in open source and stuff like that it's great but you know getting things like controllers to work getting things like your headset, even stuff like getting your headset to work that's USB, that stuff 
is surprisingly difficult. And if you've got like one of those gaming headsets that's, you know, specific to Windows, yeah, unfortunately, that's probably not going to be working too well. So, you know, there's going to be frustrations out there, which, yeah, sure, you know, give it a go. And, you know, you can boot these solutions from a USB stick. Like, it works. You can try it out. So do try it out if you want to have a go. But from a commercial perspective, it, it's... Like it's a sure it's another market, but is the market viable? And that's what it comes down to. Like you can the pin fans po- like response is very much about oh it should be you know everything should be on you know available and you know Proton allows you to do it, but do they need to do it? That's the real question. Is Linux the market that they want to target? That's it. Just comes down to that, right? <laughs> so and, and you got and that's where it comes down to. How much money are you spending on R and D to do this and problem solve it? It, it becomes a spreadsheet, and mm. it becomes real obvious real quickly that it just isn't worth. Look, do you want them to spend the time doing that, or do you want them spending time working on new physics and working on better mm. visuals and working on uh, better, you know, maybe doing head to head at some point? You know, there's all these other factors that are way more important to way more of the community than this little, little itty bitty tiny subset. I mean, I got to imagine if VR isn't getting the attention that they want right now, that community this is probably is even massively larger than than the Linux community that wants this. So the, the closing line really is, you know, it it basically is the the catchphrase of pretty much any Linux stalwart, which is, you know, I'd suggest you all give the the M dollar OS a second thought. Yeah. Though after reading a bit about its disgraceful history, it's worth ditching it alone for the new exciting things you can learn with Linux and being part of a community. Yeah, you know, Linux is great until you have to actually, you know, do anything with it. And I'm, I'm telling you this because I've used it, trying to use it as a daily driver yeah. um, in, in a replacement for a desktop environment like Windows or Mac. And I can tell you what, when I was able to migrate over from Linux to a Mac in one of my jobs, it was like, hang on. So I get all the benefits of a Linux operating system with Unix and command line and all the ability to run all the tools and stuff, but it sucks way less and I can do stuff with it. Like, okay, sign me up for that because I don't have time to stuff about. My time's important and my time's actually really expensive. And look, if you want to tinker around with stuff, you knock yourself out, but I've got stuff to do. Yeah. And it's not configuring a Linux system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my closing point to that. And uh, yes, AJ, at the end of the day, everything does reduce to money, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's what you were, I don't think that you were uh, stating it as that, but that's just, that's life. I mean, that's time, fact. It, and it, you're right, AJ. It, it really it's, is. It's, time is money. Basically, you know, I just spent, because <laughs> I have time and I, my wife laughs at me when I do this, and I, ju- I did it for the second week in a row. But last week, I decided that uh, I was sick and tired of how our shower door looked, and it was time to really, really do a cleaning on it, which meant taking the thing off the hinges and taking it outside and seeing what I could do. Right, right. I wound up spending five hours <laughs> trying to <laughs> scrape it and clean it. And here's the thing, as with anything, when I started it, it was like I saw immediate results. I went, oh, I can do this. But then as you get into it, it becomes progressively more difficult. And then it becomes, well, you really should have gone to the store and gotten some, you know, calcium lime remover. And you really should have be using this. But it's, ow, oh, but look how far I've gotten so far. I don't need any of that. And then an hour later, you're like, okay, I really could have used it. But, well, I'm too far past now. I'm just going to, like I said, five hours later. And one of my neighbors was like, you should have just gone to a store and bought a new door. And he's right in terms of time versus money. Um, Right now I've got all the time in the world. I don't have all the money in the world. So it's, I'm going to spend the time, but there becomes a certain point where you don't have all the time in the world and you do have some money, maybe not a lot, but it becomes, Hey, is it better to spend the money and have it function properly and, and work great or spend the time trying to tinker and do it? If, Mm. if, if it's a hobby that is fun to you, then the time is worth it. If it's not a hobby and not fun at all, then the money becomes worth it. And yep. any of these things that go on with game development, of course it comes down to sales. 
uh, they're not doing this for out of the generosity of their heart. They're doing it to be profitable to be able to exist many years down the line. Uh, mm. And to Farsight's credit, they're a game studio that's been around 20 plus years. That's yeah. difficult. That's a long time. That's a very long time. They found mm. a method that works for them. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that well for the game player. Um, yeah, that's right. Zen, I think, is trying to find what works great for them and can potentially accelerate them to the next level. Uh, these are tactics that Blizzard, EA, Activision, name your giant studio. At one point or another, they were a tiny studio. Yeah, that's right. So, and, and how did they get big? By making smart choices that... Mm -hmm might seem uh, uh, monopolistic or uh, very greedy, but it's what ensures that they're around for the long haul. Like as Dave VP says in chat, Linux users on Steam are 0.88% of the total <laughs> user base. So that's a figure that they'll be looking at probably, uh, Pinfan7. <laughs> and like so, you said, Jared, we know that Mel is all about the data. So well, it's about them. It's that data is king when they make decisions, and yeah. so it should be. Like yeah. that's that's the truth. Data does not lie. So yeah, yeah. So I think uh, for right now, folks, revel in I the fact that you're gonna. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> uh, but revel in the fact that you're getting. You finally know the three tables. Uh, me and Jared can finally talk again. <laughs> Yay! <This laughs> Freely. <is> good. <laughs> we we can we can go back into speculating about tables without giving away. You know, if we even talked about it, we're like. Should we do some table speculation about it? And I was like, well, people we are going to extrapolate the fact that if we don't mention X, Y, and Z table, that people are going, wait, especially if we don't mention something like Funhouse. You'd be like, well, why aren't they talking about that? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so exactly. it's just better that we don't talk about it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but just very thankful that we had like, like home use pinball cabinet you used to talk about in those six months. Otherwise, I don't know what we would have done. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah uh enjoy discussing we we i pay attention to the discord uh pinball fx3 discord channel i pay attention to the pinball fx3 reddit channel um yeah. for which both of those i think it's being going to be closed now but uh they were looking jenna was looking for moderators on those yeah um if you want to get involved in that respect and then of course i always pay attention to digital pinball fans so uh, let your reactions be known about these there. Feel free to hop onto YouTube, comment on our podcast. Let us know your reaction there. Uh, we feed off all of it. We do. That winds up, you know, creating It's great the... to see it, actually. We love it. So yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. And uh, I even had somebody commenting on a podcast that was like a year ago. Obviously, oh, wow. they're a new uh, user and you know, put in comment. I'm like, I'm happy to jump back in and throw, <laughs> throw down, uh, replies to whatever they're commenting about. So yeah, uh, yeah. do it and let us know what you think of, uh, of this uh, volume oh. six pack. Mm. All right. We're probably maybe not going to be here next week. Probably not. Probably not. Um, just so, so, give you guys a long time to digest and then potentially hopefully there'll be more uh out of zen for you guys to actually uh, physically see for yourselves um and then we'll be able to uh jump on on that uh mm. so real quick uh just looking over the comments did zen studio release date for the new tables no uh jared saying assume, a month. Yet, assume I'm, a month i'm saying assume two weeks three weeks max that's mm. what, that's what my guess is based off their uh release history, but that's not official by any stretch of the imagination. No. Um, Chances and, are you'll be playing him pretty soon. Yeah. So. And, and again, uh, the arcade one up will just be sometime in the fall. That's what uh, they had to announce. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go folks, go, go to the Twitch channel for California extreme. Watch the things yourself. Um, make sure head over to this week in pinball and uh, check yeah. out all the goodness. Cause he, I'm telling you, there's two posts a week that are chock full of pinball news and it's uh, good stuff. Not to mention, and I can't tell how many times I've now been telling, linking to that site because of all the licensing stuff. I wrote an entire article, the likes of which we had much confirmation after the fact. Head over there, over into the guest articles. I wrote one 
Uh, actually, I've written two, but the important one was about the uh, speculation about the Williams license because it's still valid and still informative today. And I'm still finding that when I, especially on Reddit, people being wildly misinformed, like I had to respond to a post where they said, well, after they lost the Williams license, they picked up Stern and Gottlieb. I went, no, 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 no. That's what they were left with. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Uh, Those sloppy seconds. Yeah. So again, yeah. head over head over to uh, thisweekinpinball.com and uh, you'll get all sorts of real table news. Um, but there's also that whole section of all the various podcasters and uh, Twitch streamers, uh, just the pinball community in general that you can check out and uh, hook up that way. Because mm. we'd like everybody to be communicating and being a, you know, make this a large community. As large yep. as possible. All right. <sighs> Jared, you know what to say. Yeah. Next week, or well, next fortnight, or whenever we do this next, it's most likely going to be about stuff and things. Not not stuffing things. Stuff and things. Stuff and things. <laughs> Just yeah. want to clarify. Yeah. All right, folks. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.